Right, so taking a look at our last example about when we have um, two independent groups that we're comparing. So let's take a look. A poll, sorry, that should say in. A poll in 2007 showed 37% support for legalizing cannabis, a margin of error of 4.5%. In 2012, another poll showed 32.6% support with a margin of error of 2.2%. Is the support dropping? So in this case, um, we're just trying to look at this complaint, this um, claim, saying that well, we've gone from 37% down to 32.6%. Is support dropping? And remember, always we're trying to deal with that uncertainty. So as we've done in similar examples, we need to find our margin of error for the difference here. And when we're comparing two independent groups, we need to make sure that we're using 1.5 times the average MOE. And previously, we've had to actually calculate what those margin of error are just from the sample size, like we did here with the men and the women in the last example, using the sample, of sample size of 400 females and 601 males. In this case, we don't have to go quite that far, because part of that calculation has been done for us. They're actually telling us what the margin of error is for each of those polls. So we don't have to worry about calculating it ourselves, but we do need to find our 1.5 and um, the average. So um, when we're comparing our individual groups, the reason that this is independent is because we have a poll from 2012 and a poll from 2007. So different years are going to be independent. What people said in 2007 is not going to impact what people say in 2012 and vice versa. You can't go backwards in time. 2012 results are not going to go back and change 2007 results you've got some independence there. So our first step again is going to be to find our difference and in this case it's going to be between the 2007 and 2012 results. So we have 37 minus 32.6 and for that we get 4.4 percent. Okay so that's our difference. Our second step is going to be to use 1.5 times the average MOE on the difference. So we need to find what our average MOE is. So um, 1.5 times the average, again that's going to be 1.5 times in brackets, let's add the two together, 4.5 plus 2.2 in brackets and divide by 2. And if we do this, you can do it in one step or we can do it in two steps. The average is 3.35 times it by 1.5 and we're going to get a margin of error to use of plus or minus 5.025%. So that's what we're going to use to calculate. Now going back to our difference, which was 4.4%. Put that in the middle, knowing that we need to go 4.4 plus 5.025 and 4.4 minus 5.025. You might notice already that that margin of error is bigger than the difference, so here we are actually going to expect to get a negative number. And on the first one, 4.4 minus it, you're going to get negative 0.625%. And on the other end, where you're adding them, you're going to get 9.025%. And you'll notice this confidence interval includes zero. So if you remember back to our inference internal, this kind of tells us that we can't actually claim that there's a difference. There's not enough support here. Because it could be the case that actually the difference between them is that the 2007 poll was 0.65 lower than the 2012 poll, or the other way around, it could be that the 2007 poll was as much as 9.025% times bigger than the 12, 2012 poll. So to answer our question, can we support this claim? Um, no, we cannot support the claim. that support for legalizing 
cannabis. Is dropping. Because our 95% confidence interval includes zero. And another way to look at this as well is that our confidence interval, again to interpret it, tells us that um, support in 2007 could be as much as 6, sorry, not 6.25, 0 0.625 percent lower than 2012, meaning that 2012 is actually slightly higher, so the support has increased, or um, maybe not that, or as high as much as 9.025% um, higher than 2012. So with that idea of the sample error and our uncertainty, we don't know if the difference between these polls actually shows us that 2007 was lower or was higher than 2012, so we can't support this claim that it's dropping, even though it looks like it because it's gone from 37 to 32.6. Because we have to take that uncertainty into account, that difference could actually just be from the sampling error, so we can't actually say that we support that claim. And this is something you really want to pay attention to when you're listening to statistics and when you're listening to people talking about survey results and poll results on the radio, is when they have that margin of error, you know, does that mean that it overlaps? You know, they might say that nationals in the polls at 43% and labor's in the polls at, you know, 40% and the margin of error is 4, you know, you have to keep that in mind, that, that that means that either of those guys could be up or down by 4%, meaning one could be actually be ahead of the other, it could actually switch the poll result completely around. So keep that in mind, and you make sure that you go back to talk about answering the question once you've calculated your average MOE. And you do have to pay attention to whether you have an independent group or a dependent group. Again, try to think about that idea, if one, one part of the group changes its mind, does it affect the other one? If it doesn't, it's going to be an independent one, and you'll use 1.5 times the average. Um, and if one person changing their mind does change the results of both of them, again, you're just going to be doing 2 times 1 over the square root of n. And if you just want to know the confidence interval, so you can talk about whether or not somebody has a majority, etc., you're just using the 1 over square root of n to figure out how far up and down those could be. So, um... Good luck with these, do some practice on them, and yeah, I think you guys will be alright.